let's take you to our top story now. And it's got to do with uh, the outgoing premier of Gauteng, uh, David Makura. What might be his legacy, achievements, possible failures? And we're joined in studio by the deputy chairperson of the ANC in Gauteng, Nomantum Gomo Ralehoko, who joins me now. Good morning to you, ma'am, and thank you very much. For morning to you, too, Kwele. Before we talk about what you think are the achievements of this administration that was led by David Makura, at political level, what necessitated this move that the Premier makes way for a new premier before the end of term of office, so close to the end of this administration, by the way. The premier indicated to us that he would like to leave at the end, before the end of his term, mm. and we agreed on that because we didn't see anything wrong, and I don't think it's too close. We are still left, I'm sure, about 17 or 18 months so. So moving, he said to us, he will want when he leaves, at least there's that transition he's able to hand over to the new person that must run the administration, but he will still work with us. So he indicated with that very strongly so that in any issue, he will still be around in the province, he will still be working as a member of the ANC. So we didn't see anything wrong with his move. What do you say to people who do not buy that story, who say that this is a direct product of ANC internal wranglings and I'm not saying this um, as a person who's conducting this interview I've just conducted one with the IFP in Gauteng very very clear and adamant that it would be only a child who would believe this story that Makura uh, did not uh, get pushed he certainly did not resign of his own volition at least that's according to the IFP. What, what do you say to that? It's not correct what Obongos is saying because if it was pushed, definitely we will know now that he was pushed. He was not pushed. He was clear that this is what he wanted to do in his own accord. And you remember, we had an interview with him last month where he was speaking himself. He said, I don't want anybody to speak on my behalf. I will be leaving. I'm handing over to the new leadership that must run the administration. I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, I did watch that. Uh, mm -hmm. interview myself there's a mm -hmm. whole panel mm -hmm. of yes. uh, people there mm -hmm. led by Banyazele Sufi mm -hmm. nah, I'm not convinced you I'm can't be convinced you. because you're not part of us but of I'm course, convinced, yeah. of course. but let, let's get into what you think have been the achievements of this he has, administration. He has done a lot of things in yes. the last administration because it started in the fifth administration. There were big projects that they did and I'm sure you can see yourself. Now recently there are these ones that were doing off special economic zones in the province that are bringing in investors. We have seen him even in the trip that he left, he went for Germany. He was still finalizing some of the agreements that he has done during his era. But I think you can see in Tswane, we have seen the investment that we've done on the special economic zone that is done, that we have done it with Ford there. And we will continue to do that work because it's one of the work that we believe that Premier is leaving a good legacy mm -hmm. in our province. In Sidibeng, there is already a process of another special economic zone. There is the one that is at the airport in Tswane. I'm sorry, not in Tswane, in Eguruleni, mm -hmm. in our Tambo that is at phase two now. In West Rand, we're coming up with another. Um, SEZ that is bringing uh, again investors in, the, in that, in that uh, region. The Basmart, you know, that there is that um, project that is big that is coming up there again in West Rand. Yeah. So he has created a lot of opportunities to a lot of people, including the skills development because he has been pushing for that in the province and all the departments. Pity that the two years, last two years, we were ranked by COVID-19, so we we're unable to do some of the things that if he leaves, we'll say this is so much that he has done to create more opportunities in our country and in our province. Yeah. And I'm sure to many people or for many people that have been absorbed mm -hmm. in these uh, opportunities that mm -hmm. have opened up, you mentioned Ford mm -hmm. in Tswane, that's mm -hmm. a very, very firm and solid uh, work opportunity for those people that would have been absorbed Absolutely. there and it's certainly a legacy that he leaves behind but mm -hmm. some people will be wondering and I'm one of those whatever happened to the aerotropolis in Ekurulene because that's one policy 
intervention mm. that has been punted by the ANC, I think, since the time of mm. Nomvula Mokonyane. Yes. I don't see anything uh, arising out of at least this administration whose term is near the end. It has not stopped because we are working very closely with the national government. I remember now it's part of the big projects that the national government is doing under the infrastructure development. You remember um, Sputler Ramukhupa is there dealing with the big projects. Part of those big, big projects, Electropolis is part of those. So it's still there in the pipelines. And I think the development that we see part of it at the airport, including the one that I'm saying, that's a second phase of the OR Tambo um, International Airport. It's part of the work that we're doing, broadening the Electropolis. Mm. So it's still there, but as a province, we're no longer talking about it much because it's part of those projects that are in the pipeline at the president's Okay, so office. in the pipeline, mm. what are we looking at in terms of job creation, the, the possible investments that could come as a result of that. And I ask you this specifically because it's a major mm -hmm. economic booster. Oh, yes. Broadband connectivity is one of those mm -hmm. that we're busy with. When he was around, he managed to meet with some of the big companies that are going to work with us again. For example, your German companies, these big companies mm -hmm. that are going to come, Mercedes-Benz and BMW, Roslyn is going to be revived again because everyone wants to come back now. So there are those projects that definitely they will come, including this one of the connectivity that we're talking about here. Yeah. Before we talk about what people see as failures mm -hmm. of this administration, of which you are a part, by mm -hmm. the way, um, let's talk about crime, mm -hmm. which is a deterrent to investment mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. In Gauteng, a major story broke last month, and it was the rape of um, eight women near Kruger Stop at a mine dump there. Mm -hmm. That situation played itself out in Bumalanga. It may not necessarily have been rape, but it's tough wars between the so-called Zamazamas there. Mm -hmm. Look today what we are talking about. We're not attributing it to the Zamazamas, but it's the crime situation. What is being done in Gauteng to curb this cancer of crime? Quite a lot of work that we are doing as a province. I'm sure we have seen every Thursday the Premier and the MEC and the Commissioner and the whole team around the province, they are all out making sure there is that program that we are doing of, uh, make, of checking if things are right in every province and every corner. Mm. And it's, done, it's led by the Premier, by the way, with the MEC, Faith Mazibuko, that program of making sure that, what do you call that name? I forgot. Ukai Mulao. Ukai Mulao. The Ukai Mulao. How is it that I'm reminding you? Hey, and I like that word because when I speak, I will, I'm, I'm sure in my speeches, you'll always find Ukai Mulao because I've made it a point that they have the funds that are running that program called Ukai Mulao. Mm -hmm. So the Ukai Mulao is one of the projects that I think for me is a success story. Mm -hmm. But we're not proud about what has happened in Kruger's Top. I have to be honest with you. We don't want that to happen. And I'm sure we have seen even the organization, my PNG, always my organization, ANC, where we're doing some work in those areas where there are these mines and we're pushing that the minister must close those those um, areas where the Zamazamas are able to dig and get inside and come out and do everything that they like to do. So in West Rand, this is one area that we feel that what has happened, they shouldn't have happened. We don't need it in our country and it will strengthen the processes of Ukaimulao but even other enforcement agencies because we believe that there is more work that we should do to arrest the situation let in the you. province. Yeah. Let, let, let me say this. I don't think I am convinced sitting here mm -hmm. listening to you that Ukaimulao has absolutely delivered the goods of curbing crime. If anything, some people hold a firm view that it's just a PR exercise because it's all you do plan. really, all that you do or whenever Okai Mulao is operational, it's vehicles being stopped, searched no, and you'll be, well, it's you'll be that told that it's uh, firearms me. that have been Trust me, seized. It's not a PR exercise. If, if it wasn't an, a PR exercise, why then has the whole industry of illegal mining Mm -hmm. taken hold because that's why we saw what we saw in Kruger stop it's because it crime is not being dealt with
properly. I don't agree no, no, with you. No, no, let, let, me don't agree with you let me finish. Let me finish. So much work has been done, mm. and I think what we'll have to do to you is to bring the statistics and the visible things that those colleagues are doing. One of the mornings, go and join them at 7 o'clock. Mm. I have been there, by the way. I know exactly what they are doing. There are a lot of arrests that they are doing because of Mkai Mulau. And that visibility that you always that it's not there in the province. You see it with Ukai Mulau. And we have seen there are quite a number of uh, police that are visible in specific areas. The incident in West Rand, it didn't happen because we're not doing anything. Mm. It's because of the Zamazamas that have been under the ground that decided to go out and rape our children, which I believe that it's something that we must fight as citizens and the communities. But Ukai Mulau, it's there and it's working and we need to support those colleagues. And we need to integrate because through Ukai Mulau, we're integrating all our forces, if you have seen. Yes. It's not only the police. We bring in even the municipal police. They are working with them, the metros in the metros, where we are in the districts, if we are there. So almost everybody is geared towards that. So I don't want us to break, take a break now and say, okay, Mulao is not working, because we will be misleading the communities. Okay. If that's the case, mm -hmm. why are kidnappings also part of the language of crime in, 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 in Gauteng? You know, clearly for me, the, the, these incidents that are happening of crime in our country and in yes. our province are the things that we should stop, even ourselves, as the society. It shows that there's something wrong in our society because you can see the incidents like this one of Krugerstop that I want to make an example about it. Not a normal person can do what you've seen in Krugerstop. Mm -hmm. So we can't say they, those people are normal. So almost all these incidents, which means we need to intensify our education programs, our educate our societies about these do's and don'ts in our children because in some cases you find that it's young children that are committing these crimes in our society. So there is this education that we must always do and I'm happy because we were part of the provincial government at some stage when we were making sure that community safety department, they go to communities mm -hmm. educate our communities about the do's and don'ts in society. Yes. And I think now there's this moral decay in our society that is creating all these wrong things that are happening. But we need everyone in our country and in our province. It can be only the Department of Community Safety that must do that. All of us must take full responsibility about these incidents of crime that are happening in our province. Very briefly, because this issue of crime then feeds into another national discourse. Mm -hmm. And I say it's a national discourse because it has been for some time that residents, particularly in Gauteng, and that's why you have had organizations like Operation Tudula mm -hmm. uh, forming themselves because they are all standing up to say, we are fighting crime, mm -hmm. which the government of the day is failing to do. So mm -hmm. let's talk about immigration, or mm -hmm. should we say those who are here illegally. At some stage, mm -hmm. the Premier, and I'm glad I'm asking the person who is part of his administration here, he stood up and said that we are going to have to have a conversation with neighboring countries mm -hmm. about them giving us money in exchange for some of their people or some of their citizens who come here with the strained resources that we have but mm -hmm. are seeking help, whether it be medical or not. Whatever became of that talk or was it just that talk? I think what we will have to do ourselves is to pursue some of the things that you have raised and we'll see which one is best. But for me, conversation is needed indeed with our counterparts. But there, it faded. Especially in the neighboring countries. It was not long, remember. Maybe it's still in the program that you were Maybe supposed it's still to in the program. So, but I you think speak as need, if you're someone who's so outside of this So the new premier must take over what premier said he's going to do yeah. and he couldn't do it. But you see, so it's what, our it responsibility. Do you see what it is that you do as politicians. You will say something because it fits the narrative. No, it it's, it's You're not like trying to appease. No, 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 it's not true. The anger. Premier, he was not appeasing the anger. He was telling us things that we should be doing, which I, have full, I fully agree with him. How is it that he did not take it forward? How is it that he did not take it forward? Because look no. at what him not taking it forward could have possibly been a forums. benchmark for Limpopo, where the MEC said some unfortunate Listen, things so there. There are forums that we should do. And I agree with you, we should start with the provinces, we should start with the ambassadors that are in our country, so that we can link up 
with the, with the other uh, counterparts in their, in, their, in their areas in Africa. Because we're in Africa, all of us, by the way. But I think these conversations that Premier was raising, it's something that we should do. Mm -hmm. So I agree with what he has said. That's why I'm saying now, because the new Premier is going to take over, we must definitely implement that program because people are watching us indeed, as you are saying. So it's something that we must deal with it here. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to finish off with uh, what has been seen as failures. Mm -hmm. Life as a Dimeni, that's a blight on this administration. It was an unfortunate incident. It remember. is a blight on this administration. PPE corruption in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. Look what has happened to Babita Diokaran. That's a complete failure, is it not? There's no, there's no papering over the cracks on this one, is it not? Why are you these saying incidents? this? Because... These are absolute failures no, of this not administration. Correct. Not I correct. I will not say that you are correct again, because the issue of Papita, it has been handled, do you remember? Uh -huh. There is investigations, the investigations that are being done once everything is finalized. But people have been arrested, do you remember? Hmm. It's unlike no boat was arrested during Papita's case. So it's something that we are we're dealing with it. So you can't say it's a failure, that one. So how, Life we, how is, is it that we don't issue. know who ordered the hit? Life is a demand issue. You know that there was some work that has been done. It's an unfortunate yeah. incident that it happened that way. And I don't think it will happen again. Would you advocate for Ertan Masangu to be arrested for what she did? No, no, no. I will not say that. But I know that there was a process that is being followed. Mm -hmm. So that these families are happy. I know that when you have lost a loved one, you can't be completely okay, happy. Let me, let me but it's an incident that has happened that we did apologize on that. Yeah. Let's close it on this then. Mm -hmm. If Ertan Masangu, as a result of the inquest that is ongoing right now, if Ertan Masangu finds herself in handcuffs and appearing in court, are you going to go there and support her as a fellow ANC Why, member? Why, Koli, don't we leave that because you are saying there are still investigations and we are great, both of us. Let's not talk about it so that because now we are preempting what must be done. And for okay. me, I think it will be a bit unfair. All right. Let's leave the conversation there. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Deputy Chairperson of the ANC.